Mrs. Rock here. Did you know that you can draw a bird just by using simple shapes? Well, today I'm going to show you how, and we're going to turn those birds into a shape bird painting. Let's get started. Here's what you need. Before I start on my painting, I'm going to open up my sketchbook to a clean sheet and I'm going to practice drawing my sheep birds. I'm going to split my page up into four sections because there's four different kinds of sheep birds we're going to practice today. So I'm going to make a big line down the middle here and another line here. And I'm using a black crayon, but you could use a pencil if you want. The first kind of bird I'm going to draw is a semicircle bird. So I'm gonna start off with a semicircle. And a semicircle is just half of a circle. It looks like a big C. Now I'm going to draw another line that connects the two ends. And from here, I can make my legs and give my birdie some feet. He needs a wing. and a beak. So I drew another curved line and then I draw a line straight up like that. My bird needs an eye. That's going to give him a lot of personality. So I draw a circle and a little pupil. And you can decide what kind of feathers or wings he wants. There's lots of different kinds to choose from. I think he needs some tail feathers too. So I'm going to give him just a simple little tail feather like that. And there's my semicircle bird. My next kind of bird is going to be a circle bird. So I'm going to give my bird a big circular body. And your circle doesn't have to be perfect. They never really are. And I'm going to give my bird a circle head. Again, my bird needs little legs and little feet. I can give him a different kind of wing. It's up to you what kind of wing or tail feathers you give your bird. Definitely needs a beak, so I'm going to draw a triangle off to the side and an eye. Maybe he's looking behind him up like that. And I'm going to give him just a couple little spiky feathers on top of his head. It looks like a little crown. That's my circle bird. Okay, my next bird is an S-shaped bird. And it's just like it sounds. It's in the shape of an S. So I'm going to draw a big S that's kind of tilted on its side. Next, I'm going to connect this end with this end here by drawing one straight line. I'm going to make a little curved line here for his beak. Looks kind of like a puffin and a line across. Give this bird an eye. Oh, he's all of a sudden got a lot of personality. How about some fun feathers on his head? And a wing. Maybe his tail feathers are sticking up like this. And of course some legs. Maybe he's a really tall bird. He's got long legs. And there is my S-shaped bird. Last is my teardrop bird. A teardrop is a shape that looks kind of like a drop of water. It's really skinny on one side and comes to a point and really round on the other side. It might take some practice to draw that teardrop shape. And I think my teardrop shaped bird is going to be singing. So I'm going to draw two of these V shapes, whoops, going off the edge for his beak and maybe a closed eye. Could even give this guy some eyelashes just for fun. And I'm going to give my teardrop shaped bird a sweet little wing here. Maybe some little lines here to show the little tail feathers. Some little feathers on top. And of course, 
some legs and feet. Next, you're gonna choose which kind of shape bird you want to use for your shape bird painting. For this next part of the project, you could keep on using a black crayon or you could use a Sharpie. Okay, and now that I'm working a lot bigger, I need to think about taking up my whole page for my bird. So it's not gonna be as small as like I drew in my sketchbook. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So I've decided to make a semicircle bird. So I'm gonna start with that semicircle shape. There's half my circle. It's kind of like in a C shape. And then I'm gonna connect this edge with this edge here. So there's my semicircle. You could add a beak on the end, make it sticking out, or you could add that curved line and a line like this. Choose what kind of wing you want. Maybe you want it kind of pokey, maybe you want it more rounded. I think I'm gonna go with something like this. And then I'm gonna add an eye for my bird. This gives it a lot of personality. And my bird is gonna be looking up. Next, add some feathers on top of its head. It's up to you what you want your feathers to look like. I think I'm gonna make mine kind of curly. And I'm gonna give my bird some tail feathers. And I wanna be really dramatic with my tail feathers, so I'm gonna give my bird some really fancy, big, plumy tail feathers, but it's up to you what you want your tail feathers to look like. Ooh, that's so fun. Okay, and my birdie needs some legs and feet. All right, my bird needs to be somewhere, so I'm gonna think about where a bird might be. My bird is gonna be on a tree branch. So I'm gonna make sure that I draw my tree branch down here and that the legs look like they're actually on top of the tree branch. So I'm gonna draw a line and make it kind of bumpy like a real tree branch and give it some little branches here and there. And I wanna go back behind the legs so it really looks like my bird is on a branch. Here are some of those branches, little branches, sticking out from the big branch. Maybe there's another one down here. They kind of come off the big branch in smaller pieces. And I'm making it kind of bumpy so it looks like the bark of a tree. I might even add in Maybe there's a big knot in the tree, you know, those dark parts, and give it a little texture here and there. I'm going to add in some leaves. You can make your leaves different shapes. I'm just doing kind of a simple leaf shape with a line down the middle. And when you look at leaves on a tree, they're usually in little clusters. So I'm going to draw my leaves kind of bunched up in clusters and even coming off the edge of the page. I think that I need something going on in the background here. I could have a sun or a moon and some stars. I think maybe this bird is gazing up at the moon. So I'm gonna draw a little crescent moon up here. So I make a big exaggerated C shape and then a smaller C shape inside. And I have a special way of how I'm gonna make my stars and I'll show you that in a little bit using crayons. The next thing I'm going to do is add some patterns and some details with crayons. So I'm gonna add some patterns and some details on my bird. I think I'm gonna give my bird maybe some polka dots. A pattern is a design that repeats. So whatever pattern you start, make sure you fill up that whole section with that same pattern. 
And yours doesn't have to be polka dots. It could be stripes or hearts or checkerboard or some other kind of pattern that I haven't even thought of. I think maybe I'm gonna give the wings some stripes. I think I'm gonna add some interesting details over here on the tail feathers. Now for my trick on how to make stars. What I do is use either a white crayon or a yellow crayon and I draw my stars on the white paper. And they're really hard to see right now, but once I paint over them, you'll see them appear. It's called creating a wax resist. The wax in the crayon will push the watercolor paint away. It will resist it. And so you'll see these stars emerge when we paint. You can't see them right now, but I promise you, you'll be able to see them once we paint. And I'm even gonna color in my moon. And now I'm ready to paint. I've got my messy mat underneath my painting so I don't mess up my table. I've got my water cup. I have my watercolor paint and a couple different sizes of paintbrush. I've got a thicker one and a thinner one for little details. When I take my brush out of my water cup, I'm gonna make sure not to tap my brush on the edge of my water cup because that will just splatter the paint water everywhere. And I need that water on my paintbrush because it will help activate my paint. So I'm going to activate my watercolor paint by applying some water to the surface of my paint. And I'm just kind of ice skating on the surface of my paint, picking up that watercolor paint. If I add too much water, I'm gonna make a puddle on my paper and it will be a mess. But if I don't add enough water, my brush will be too dry and it will be too difficult to paint. So when I paint, I pull my brush across my page and I like to get the edges first because that's the hardest part, I think, getting around those edges. So notice how I'm pulling it. It's gonna be really difficult to get in that little spot there. I could use my smaller brush or I could just turn my big brush kind of sideways and use the narrow part of my bristles to get in those little tiny spots. And notice I'm not scrubbing my paper. I'm just applying paint to the surface of my paper. Also look how I'm holding my brush. I'm not holding it with a fist like this or like this. I'm not holding it way off on the edge because I don't have any control that way. I wanna hold it like I would hold a pencil or a crayon, right where the metal part meets the handle. Remember, I like to go on the edges first and pull very slowly using that flat edge of my brush as a guide as I pull it across. And I like to do the hard parts first might need a little bit more water, a little bit more paint, just a couple little swipes of paint. And then that paint can flow a little bit more freely. And notice sometimes I turn my brush over to use the paint on the other side of the brush. And there, I've done the hard part now. I can go back and do the middle part. But I think I'm gonna paint that wing a different color. So I'm gonna avoid the wing and go back and paint that a different color. And you can still see my crayon pattern showing through because the wax in the crayon resists the watercolor paint. It pushes it away. There we go, there's the body of my bird. Now I'm gonna paint the wing a different color. So I need to rinse my brush off. And for the wing, since it's a smaller space, I'm gonna use my smaller brush. And for the wing, I think I'm gonna use a lot more water and just a little bit of paint to make that color really light. The more water you use and the less paint, the lighter your color is going to be. But the less water and the more paint, the darker your color is going to be. 
because the water dilutes the paint and makes it thinner. And so you can see more of the white paper showing through. Okay, I'm gonna keep painting my shape bird painting and filling in carefully all these beautiful places that I've carefully drawn. But I'm gonna leave the eye white. I'm not gonna paint the eye. I wanna leave that eye white just how it is. You wanna be careful not to paint wet paint right next to other wet paint because then the two colors will mix and blend together. So just be really careful with that. let this dry a little bit before I paint my background. The foreground is what you see closest to you in your picture and the background is what's furthest away. And so when I paint my background I want to make sure that my foreground is nice and dry so that my foreground and my background don't blend together. I'm ready to paint my background now and I'm thinking that I don't want to use just one color that I'd kind of like to blend two colors to make a midnight blue color because if my bird is out at night and the moon and the stars are out, I could use a little black and a little bit of blue to make that midnight blue color. I'm gonna use my bigger brush for this one and I need a lot of water because I'm gonna be spreading this color out over a big area. You could use different colors, like if yours is a sunset, you could use sunset colors, reds and oranges and yellows purple even, pink, that could be really interesting. That was so fun. I loved creating this shape bird painting with you. And remember, yours might look a little bit different. Maybe you have the S shape bird or the circle bird or the teardrop shape bird. And maybe yours is during the daytime or maybe you have something different in your background. Maybe you've got some other little birds in your background or maybe a nest up in the branch. It's up to you because remember when you're creating, the possibilities are endless.